in which a recorded vote of the yeas and nays are ordered. I ask unanimous consent that the chairman be authorized to declare a recess at any time during today's meeting without objection. That is so ordered. And finally, I'd ask unanimous consent for the committee to use an amendments roster for any items under consideration by the committee without objection. That is also um, so ordered. So we're gonna roll through um, the amendments pretty quickly. Um, I would advise members um, or staff to let their member know that uh, if, uh, if you're not here and we move on, um, then uh, uh, we're not going back. So we need to move through this and move through it quickly, and then we will um, take up the vote at the, or all of the votes uh, at the end of uh, uh, the amendment uh, debate. So moving forward. Now recognize myself for an amendment Graves 16 revised uh, to the amendment in the nature of a substitute that I have at the desk, and I'd ask unanimous consent to in block with Graves 16 revised these additional amendments. So it'd be Norton 56 revised, Molinaro 52 revised, Garamendi 65 revised, Edwards 12 revised, Zell 7 revised, Molinaro 51 revised, Molinaro 53. Gooden, 36, Johnson of South Dakota, 33, Stauber, 17, Stauber, 18, Auchincloss, 17, and Titus, 57. Clerk, please designate the envelope. An amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, offered by Mr. Graves of Missouri, M. Block, Norton, 056, Molinaro, 052, Garamendi, 065, Edwards, 012, Ezel, 007, Molinaro, 051, Molinaro, 053, Mr. Gooden of Texas, 036, Johnson of South Dakota, 033, Stauber, 017, Stauber, 018, Auchincloss, 017, and Titus, 057. Without objection, the amendments will be considered as read, and I'd recognize myself for five minutes to speak on uh, the unblock. So the unblock amendment, uh, and by the way, I appreciate the work of my colleagues on both sides uh, of the uh, aisle on this package uh, of changes. It obviously improves the bill um, that we are considering. And with any good bipartisan bill, discussions uh, have been continuing during the markup and we were able to reach an agreement on a whole lot of uh, matters that, uh, that are out there. This also includes several edits that were agreed to for the manager's amendment and in our haste required a little bit of tweaks um, which are now incorporated. And given that, uh, this amendment in block follows uh, on the uh, manager's amendment. And I appreciate the hard work that went into this on both sides of the aisle, and I urge every member to support the unblock. And I know staff had, were working um, fairly late uh, to get this done, and uh, I appreciate that in a huge, huge way. And with that, um, I yield back and, and recognize Mr. Larson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I support the unblock amendments and ur urge colleagues to uh, vote for the unblock. This unblock represents bipartisan policy that supports the goals and the objectives of the underlying bill. And I too want to thank uh, the staff for their work um, after, uh, after we recessed last night to uh, make this all happen. And with that, uh, urge support and yield back. Ms. Titus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and the ranking member for helping us to get this amendment this far. Also, Mr. Van Drew for co-sponsoring this with me. This air carrier access amendments, uh, it uh, comes to you really thanks to the work of Representative Jim Langevin. And if you were new here and didn't have a chance to know him, it's a shame because he was a great uh, legislator who spent most of his adult life in a wheelchair, and he was a great champion for disability rights. We worked very hard on this language, and again, I appreciate your staff for the, the big four, or the four corners, for getting this here. And um, it just, it, it includes implementing training standards for assisting wheelchair users. It establishes aircraft accessibility standards, and it sets a deadline for the DOT to investigate and uh, respond to disability-related complaints. We know that when people travel, their experience begins the minute they hit the airport, and we want that to be the best possible. We've heard from many disabled groups, including 
uh, and especially this effort led by our disabled veterans, that these are problems that they face. And the airlines were great. They stepped up and worked with us as well. So thank you for including this in the package, and I urge everyone to vote for it. Mr. Johnson. I want to start by thanking the chairman and his team. When you have a complex uh, legislative package like this, uh, it takes a lot of thoughtfulness and I think strategic effort to make sure that it comes together. Uh, they've been wonderful to work with. I want to talk just a little bit about the uh, essential air service provisions of the Enblanc. Uh, one of the things that I love about American exceptionalism is our willingness to invest in infrastructure across this country, that we will be one connected country we did it with rural electrification. What a beautiful American success story. We did it with universal service. What a beautiful American success story. We did it with the interstate highway system. What a beautiful American success story. There's a concept uh, called network value that says that the bigger the network is, the more value that accrues to everyone else on the network. And that makes sense. Picking up a phone call, uh, a, a phone in Manhattan that can only call other people on that island is a very limited value. And air service is a part of that national network. It is a part of this great American success story. Now we're not gonna have an airport in every town. That doesn't make any sense. There's a balance here. I wanna to talk to you about my hometown. It's the state capital of South Dakota. You all call it Pierre, but we call it Pier. There are not a lot of French people in South Dakota. And it is 175 miles from Rapid City, South Dakota, and it is maybe 225 miles from Sioux Falls. It's the second smallest state capital in the country. Thank you, Montpelier. It, we need air service in the state capital of South Dakota, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a wonderful American commitment to infrastructure that it is a part of that broader aviation network. And the chairman has been very thoughtful in making sure that we have an opportunity to drive down the costs in the EAS program. There are two important ways that the base text does that. Number one, it takes the top cap from $1,000 to $500. That's a major reform. Thank you, sir. And then number two, it makes sure uh, with the Unblock Amendment that, uh, that this support is focused on the, moat, uh, on the most remote airports. I get it, if you're 25 miles away from a major airport, this support mechanism may not be for your airport. But if you are the people of South Dakota who want to be able to have the broader world access your state capital, the En Blanc and the underlying text maintains that American commitment, I urge a yes vote uh, on the uh, amendment. Mr. Ogden Klaus. Thank you. Chairman Graves, uh, I appreciate that the chairman, the ranking member Larson, uh, chairman, uh, subcommittee chairman Graves and ranking member Cohen, uh, including my amendment in the on block. My amendment has to do with curb management practices, such as remote enforcement using sensors and cameras to reduce traffic at pickup and drop off areas and to improve travelers' airport experience. Currently, curb management is in a regulatory gray area, creating uncertainty for airports and vendors that are trying to reduce traffic, stress, and unsafe maneuvers as the flying public arrives at their terminals. My amendment would provide clarity and flexibility for airports' landside operations by making clear that there is no federal regulations preventing airports from managing their curbs. This amendment would not impact any state or local restrictions, nor would it require airports to do anything at all. It simply creates legal clarity. In addition to helping large and medium-sized airports improve safety, passenger experience, and queuing times in increasingly crowded and multimodal drop-off and pickup areas, cutting-edge curbside management can serve as a demonstration project to adjacent cities and towns that are wrestling with how to unlock better curbside use for delivery, micro-mobility, ride-share, parking, and outdoor dining and recreation. I thank my colleague, Congressman Mast, for co-sponsoring this amendment, and I urge my colleagues to support the en bloc and this measure therein. Uh, and I want to close also just on a personal note for the, the chairman and the ranking member. Uh, I know we're still in the, the mid innings of this process, but I've just found this to be a very refreshing way to craft legislation through regular order with compromise and policy front and center. Uh, so thank you to this junior member for showing me <laughs> how we can do it the right way. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stauber. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And I want to speak in support of uh, three amendments from my good colleague from Pierre, South Dakota. <laughs> the Essential Air Service has made a huge impact on the district uh, that I represent. 
When airlines were deregulated, small communities worried they would be abandoned by the federal government yet again. Rural districts, like the one I represent, often get written off as flyover country. EAS is the last line of defense for making this a complete reality. As I continue to mention, Minnesota's 8th Congressional District is one of the most beautiful places in the world. Just take a flight to International Falls and check out Voyagers National Park or fly to Brainerd and enjoy the Brainerd Lakes area. Fly to Bemidji and see beautiful Lake Bemidji or take a flight to Hibbing, the heart of mining country. However, none of this would be possible without EAS. For most of Minnesota's 8th Congressional District, getting down to the Minneapolis airport can be a real challenge. The EAS airports provide an opportunity for my rural constituents to quickly, conveniently, and safely connect with the rest of the country. I want to ensure the long-term viability of EAS airports, and I respect that the big four believe that adding a cost share requirement will help the sustainability of EAS. However, what seems like pennies to many here in Washington is a lot of money to rural Minnesota. Congressman Johnson's Amendment Number 33 will create an exemption for the cost share of EAS airports that are more than 175 miles away from medium or large hub airports, which will help protect our most rural, vulnerable populations. Additionally, I am concerned that the government will keep going back for more and continue to increase the cost share until it prices out rural airports altogether. My amendment number 17 will solidify that the cost share is capped at 5%. This is simply an amendment we can support to give our EAS airports more stability and certainty for the foreseeable future. I want my constituents to access air travel just like everyone else and not be unduly punished by choosing to live a more humble and quiet way of life in rural America. My constituents matter, our local economies matter, Rural America matters. Support of EAS makes sure they know they matter to the elected officials here in, in our federal government. Furthermore, I am grateful to see that the, mo the most of the language of the Mobile Act was included in the un underlying bill. This legislation seeks to improve the passenger experience for those using a wheelchair. My amendment number 18 simply brings the House bill in line with the Senate version of the FAA reauthorization bill by returning language surrounding the feasibility study to the original language of the Mobile Act. This language was originally negotiated by Senators Duckworth and Thune, Ranking Member Cohen, myself, and various other stakeholders. I believe this amendment will give the Mobile Act the best chance of success in getting over the finish line. I encourage support of this en bloc, and Mr. Chair, I yield back. Does anyone else wish to be heard on the yeah. Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I have some issue with the 5% for the e, EAS, and I'm not sure how it affects certain airlines that fly into Memphis from Arkansas, if, the, if Mr. Johnson's amendment rectifies that or not. But when, if, if, you, if that's something that's going to be considered, uh, I would just like you to consider that as well, just because a lot of the cities are so small. They're really not cities. They're towns, and that they can't afford the 5% at all. Mr. Johnson, you want to I yield to you. A committee staff likely has better information, Mr. Cohen, but we've got some, and so my staff right now will follow up with your staff with whatever we've got, and you can assess the impact to uh, your airport. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Anyone else wish to be heard on the uh, amendment? Seeing no one, uh, the question is on Graves Unblock Amendment 1. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. I recognize Mr. Garamendi for a... Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You see. Uh, yesterday, I asked for a recorded vote on amendment number 61. I'd like to withdraw that request and withdraw the... Uh, and remove the uh, issue. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss this further with uh, the ranking member and, the, and you, Mr. Chairman. So with that uh, request to withdraw, my vote on Amendment 61. Request is made to withdraw Amendment 61. Um, and without objection, I guess that is so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Germendi. Moving forward, we have, is it Mr. Ryan? Mr. Ryan. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have an amendment at the desk number 017. Designate. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 offered by Mr. Ryan, number 017. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. Mr. Ryan, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just six months into the year, there have been 783 unruly passengers reported to the FAA, which is on pace to be 150% more than pre-pandemic levels. My amendment is straightforward and simple. We must update the flight attendant self-defense training to actually reflect the current reality of what our flight attendants have to deal with, significant escalation of unruly passenger behavior. We need to ensure that flight attendants are taught to recognize suspicious and unruly passenger behavior so they are prepared for the unfortunate realities of modern air travel. Uh, by giving our flight attendants the training and tools needed to de-escalate and subdue passengers, we can keep the skies safe not only for our flight attendants, but for all passengers and others involved in air travel. With that, I urge adoption and yield back the balance of my time. Does anyone else wish to be heard on the, uh, on the amendment? Seeing none, I'd recognize myself for five minutes. Um, the, amendment direct, uh, the amendment directs the FAA to work uh, to update the self-defense um, training. However, um, the underlying bill accommodates uh, for employee training. We also address some of these concerns with employee assault prevention and uh, in response. Um, given that, I, I'm gonna have to uh, oppose the amendment. Um, and with that, uh, I yield back. I uh, thank you for your amendment. Does anyone else wish to be heard uh, on the amendment? Seeing none, uh, the question is on the amendment uh, by Mr. Ryan. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by saying nay. nay. The nays appear to have it. The nays do have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Next move to Mr. LaMoffa, and where is he's going to Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Block. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Numbers 032, 033, 034. Did you get that? An amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 offered by Mr. LaMoffa, and Block, number 032, 033, and 034. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I seek and ask consent to enter them as an unblock. All good? Yes. Thank you. Um, right. I am going to, uh, since he's on blocking, I'm going to yield him such time as he may consume so he can speak on. Uh, each I'll go one. easy, sir. Thanks. All right. Uh, a number 032. Thank you again. Uh, this amendment would require the FFA to correct a small problem with their current policies preventing a restricted category civil aircraft from transporting firefighters from ground firefighting with aircraft's special purpose operation is wildfire suppression. Now, cutting us out the FAA jargon, I'll say it in more people's English here. A helicopter that's being contracted by BLM, for example, for fire suppression can carry a pilot, co-pilot, and any personnel who are directly involved in firefighter suppression from the air. Typically, these personnel are operating a bucket or coordinating with ground crews for the precise location of where to drop their retardant. According to the FAA's current policy, however, this helicopter cannot also be used to transport firefighters to a location where they participate in ground firefighting. The current FAA policy is an unnecessary barrier to be able to deploy and fully utilize the capabilities of existing airframes for wildfire suppression. This amendment has wor was worked on with our colleagues on the Senate Commerce Committee and the FAA. We're all now supportive of this language. This language is expected to be included in the Senate's bill when they start markup tomorrow. Okay. On 033, uh, the city of Banning, California, that's in Mr. Ruiz's district, he's, uh, he's offered this uh, as a legislation. They would uh, like to close their local airport known as Banning Municipal Airport. The city has voted to close the airport in 2017 and voted to reassert that desire last night. While the airport was once a worthwhile enterprise for the city, its use has dramatically declined over the years and now a drain on the city's finances. Today, today the airport costs the city about $150,000 each year. The, there used to be some opposition to closure in the local area from airport users, but the last commercial entity, a, a skydiving outfit, left the airport a couple years ago. 
The local Morongo Band of Mission Indians also supports this closure and will support economic development of the site and their own plot of land near the airport, which is currently more or less landlocked. The city of Banning has tentatively planned to redevelop much of the current airport site for film production, light manufacturing, and other industrial uses. This amendment requires the city of Banning to refund the FFA for funds that were used for airport development and pay back the state of California for the fair market value of the airport's land. The city has no objection to the repayment, which is estimated about a million dollars. Again, Representative Royal Ruiz represents Banning here in the House, has previously introduced legislation on this, on this issue and is a, a supportive of this amendment. So I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I will move on to number 34. This amendment will remove the FAA administrator's authority to claim extraordinary circumstances should, which should void the potential use of a categorical exclusion for minor airport projects if these projects are simply repairing, replacing, or maintaining existing infrastructure without substantially changing the existing footprint of that infrastructure. Now, I understand there will be certain scenarios where the FAA administrator may need to perform assessments of an airport's project's effect on nearby lands to determine if these extraordinary circumstances exist. This amendment broadly maintains that administrator's authority. Repairs, replacements, and maintenance of existing infrastructure at an airport are almost always for safety purposes and reduce liability for airport owners and operators. It's critical that we maintain the application of categorical exclusions and keep these projects moving forward. That all said, given the mood of the committee here, I will uh, withdraw the amendments for further discussion and move on them later, hopefully. I appreciate uh, that very much, and, and I would like to work with you on the um, um, on personnel on, on the planes with the retardant. I don't like, however, closing airports, but that's another issue together. I've, yeah, that's a mixed feeling there, too, but it seems to be what they want. So Thank, uh, thank you for withdrawing. The, the personnel movement would be extremely important. It's just common sense. We do need to fix that. So. We'll, uh, we'll take it up from a different angle. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for withdrawing. Mr. Yalkin, you ready? Call up your amendment. I have an amendment at the desk, number 25. Designate. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 offered by Mr. Yakum, number 025. Um, we'll consider the amendment as read. Mr. Yakum, you have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to start by thanking you for the work uh, that you've done, as well as for the ranking member, as well as all the staff for the collaborative effort, the member-driven and bipartisan process. This is how the People's House is supposed to work. I want to thank in particular for everyone working with uh, Mr. Menendez uh, and me to include in part or in whole or in substance three of our bipartisan amendments pertaining to the drone industry in the manager's amendment, Yakim Amendments 18, 19, and 22. These amendments will help streamline Section 44807, the Section 44807 process, enhance beyond visual line of sight provisions, and strengthen the UAS integration office. As they, and they are in line with the substance of our bill, the Increasing the Competitiveness for American Drones Act. The amendment I'm offering with Mr. Menendez includes elements of Yakima Amendments 18 and 19 that were not included in the manager's amendment and that reference the FAA's UAS Visual Beyond Line of Sight Aviation Rulemaking Committee, or ARC. We believe it's important for the FAA to know as it works to streamline Section 44807 that, that process and toward beyond visual line of sight rules that it shouldn't start at square one. The FAA convened with ARC a, diversity, a diverse array of industry stakeholders to make regulatory recommendations based on their expertise and their experience. And they delivered nearly 400 pages of recommendations. I recognize that there wasn't consensus, consensus on all of those recommendations, but there was consensus on many, including the ones flagged in our amendment. The intent of our amendment is to ensure the FAA doesn't completely disregard the important work of the ARC report. Drones have the potential to unleash, unleash a wave of innovation in our economy for the delivery of goods and critical supplies, as well as infrastructure inspection, agriculture, 
firefighting, and a host of other cases. But as we heard in the hearings leading up to today, drone delivery companies lamented that their biggest markets are not in the United States. They're in Australia, they're in Africa, they're in the EU, and yes, they're in China. But they're stymied here in the United States. We cannot sustain the current level of bureaucracy and also expect to maintain our leadership position in the aviation industry. With that said, Mr. Chairman, I recognize that there are differing, view, differing views on how to address specific recommendations in the ARC report and the ARC report overall. And that process is going to take a little more time than what's in front of us before this bill comes to the floor. So I'd like to ask is you, for your commitment, Mr. Chairman, to work with myself as well as Mr. Menendez and other stakeholders to find some common ground on language that ensures the FAA does not start back at square one on something that the U.S. is already far behind on. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And with that, I withdraw my amendment and I yield back. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Massey. I have an amendment at the desk. Designate. An amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 offered by Mr. Massey, number 028. Without objection, the amendment be considered as read. Mr. Massey, you have five minutes. I thank the chairman for allowing me to offer this amendment. It's uh, quite simple and it's badly needed. Um, airports can fund their improvements uh, by different methods of uh, generating revenue, and I'll go over four of those methods right now, the fourth one being the one that my amendment deals with. They can raise local taxes to fund their improvements. They collect fees from airlines that uh, use the gates at the airport, or they can come to the federal government and ask for uh, AIP grants. But the fourth method of generating revenue has been constrained for far too long, and that is to collect the fees themselves. There's something called a passenger facility charge, or PFC, that allows the airports to charge a fee for using the airport. What a concept, a user fee. This is not a tax. Sometimes we call taxes user fees as a euphemism so that we don't have to be blamed for raising taxes. But this is not a tax. It does not go to the government to then get redistributed. It does not come to Washington, D.C., where it gets filtered and pilfered and then go back under the discretion of an administration uh, with, with strings attached back to the airports. This is a true user fee, the passenger facility charge. And it's, our, uh, Congress has artificially capped this charge at $4.50 for over two decades. We haven't increased the cap. I would argue there should be no cap. Let the free market decide. Let the airports decide what the fee is that they need to collect, and they know what improvements they need to make. So my amendment is, is very simple. It says that we will remove the PFC cap and let the airports decide, let the free market decide. Uh, this is supported by a lot of free market groups, for instance, Freedom Works, Citizens Against Government Waste, Competitive Enterprise Institute, and Taxpayers Protection Alliance have supported this, uh, a bill that I introduced, a bipartisan version of this amendment was a bill. I'm, I'm getting some nods on the other side of the aisle. I think they're ready to vote for this. Uh, it's and it's pretty simple. The other, the other thing this would do is it would free up the pressure on the AIP funds. So the, the AIP funds, which are much sought after, especially by the smaller airports who can't generate enough revenue from passenger facility charges to pay for all of the improvements they need, this would free up the pressure on the AIP funds so that more grants without increasing the AIP funds, more grants could go to the smaller airports because the medium-sized airports wouldn't need as much federal support through the AIP grants. I think it, it's a great idea. It's a time who's come. We've got a lot of bipartisan support for this. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the only people that I've seen who are against it are the airlines and uh, don't want to pick a fight here, but I want everybody to understand who's for it and who's against it. And you say, why would the airlines be against the airports 
being able to fund their own uh, revenue source and their own improvements because the airlines like it when the airports have to lock in long-term leases for gates uh, so that they can finance their improvements because then the airports are beholden to the airlines. But this hurts competition. I mean, the, the airlines should have to compete at every, at every airport uh, based on their service and their flights, not based on the fact that they had the airport in a bind and the airport needed to do improvements so they signed some 10-year or other long-term contract with an airline. That, that makes the incumbents at the airport stronger, the airlines that is, at the, at the expense of consumers, frankly. So it's a very simple concept. Let the airports collect the fees, let them become more independent of the federal government, more independent of the taxpayer, uh, less beholden to the airlines at the airports, and um, provide best, better service. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of what we debate here is not, do we want better transportation? It's how the heck are we gonna pay for it? Well, I say, let the users pay for it. Don't use a tax, use a user fee, and that's what this amendment does, and I yield back the balance of my time. Mr. Larson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'm gonna say something you don't hear Democrats hear a lot, uh, say, hear say a lot. Yeah, what Tom Massey said. <laughs> that said, Unfortunately, I'm going to have to oppose this amendment. What? Um, I do support increasing the, the PFC. Um, and I made no miss, you know, that's not a mystery to anyone. I will say, in, in putting this, crafting this bill as a whole, putting it together as a whole, uh, it was clear that um, a PFC increase was not going to be part of crafting a, a, a compromise bill. Uh, and we did increase the AIP funding to from 3.35 billion to, to, to four billion uh, dollars um, in this bill, um, as as a way to approach uh, construction at our airports. Um, and so, you know, it's in the interest of ensuring that we maintain the Big Four agreement, in in the interest of maintaining the bipartisan good faith compromise that we crafted to put this whole bill together, uh, I do recommend uh, a no vote um, uh, on this amendment. And uh, with that, yield back. Does anyone else wish to be heard? Mr. Chair. Owen. Mr. Massey, do you yield for a question? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. How do you think this would have affected Delta Airlines' decision to dehub Cincinnati? Um, so in Cincinnati, since uh, the CVG airport, which is in my congressional district, uh, yeah. Delta had kind of a monopoly there. For many years, we had the highest or second highest uh, airpl airplane tickets in the country. And it was hard for other uh, challengers to come into the CVG airport because Delta had such a, a stranglehold on the CVG airport. They eventually, um, left and prices went down. Now our options decreased because we weren't a hub anymore. Um, but the CVG airport in Kentucky, but otherwise known as the Cincinnati airport, is in favor of this because they're one of those medium-sized airports that doesn't like to be beholden to the airlines like we were a few decades ago with uh, with Delta there. Do you think they might have increased their, their fees and had before not knowing that Delta was gonna jettison them. And then they'd have wasted the money because they'd have had all these fees and, and more gates and, and more uh, everything at the Delta, at the airport in Kentucky, and then not have the airplanes. Well, I think what, what could have happened is they wouldn't have been beholden to Delta. I mean, what you, what you say is a possibility, um, but I don't think they would have wasted them I know the CEO at the CVG airport, and she's very competent. She doesn't want to build an amusement park with these fees. Uh, this was, it's not going to be a Taj Mahal. They have really basic needs, and I think she would use them for that. Thank you, sir. And, and if, while, while we're having a colloquy, uh, I w if you would indulge me a little bit of time here, I, want, I want to point out to, to, uh, to Mr. Massey. Uh, thank you. To, to Mr. Larson's point, the, my amendment is not a PFC increase. 
I urge everybody to read it. I'm saying, let's get out of it. Let's don't decide what the amount should be. If there's gonna be an increase, the airports will increase it. We're, this is not an increase. Now I did have, uh, there was a prior version of this bill that uh, the Democrat, former, actually former chairman of this committee, DeFazio, he and I used to co-sponsor this bill. He wanted to increase the cap. And I said, well, instead of being blamed for increasing something, I'd rather not have a cap. And he said, well, that's, that's actually better than what I want. And so we came together and, and decided to do that. So it's not an increase. But I, uh, if I, using the gentleman from Tennessee's time, if I could ask Mr. Larson a question, why didn't we have a PFC cap increase or uncapping of the PFC in this bill? Why was that a pre-made agreement? On, sorry, on this particular bill? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I have encouraged my members to look at this bill as a whole and not as one issue, any one issue. And crafting this bill with the with the indulgence of the chair and the majority side, crafting this bill is a bipartisan compromise where a lot of trade-offs had to be made in order to get a good bill with a lot of member input and a lot of member support. And this is one of those issues that had to fall by the wayside. And I that's... That's, that's how it used to be done, and that's how we're trying to do it again. I, th I think it's a great way to do it. I, don't, I just don't know who opposes it, and if they do, for what reasons. But if you're trying to get member support, I'm undecided on this bill. And uh, uh, If you might uh, indulge me, I'm not responsible for your support on, the, on okay. this bill. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say any support you could get, I'll, I'll take support from the other side of the aisle. I'm not, I'm not prejudicial in which support I will take. Some days I'm the only vote, but uh, on this day I'm not going to be, and I think this would uh, endear a lot of people, not just myself, but endear a lot of people on the floor of the House, because it doesn't just have to pass this committee, it has to pass the full House, and I think you gain more than you lose by listening to our airports and by doing sort of a free market thing that increases revenue without raising taxes. So with that, I yield back, and I thank the gentleman from Tennessee. You're welcome, and thank you for the additional 15 seconds, and I yield back. <laughs> Does anybody else wish to be heard on the amendment? Seeing no one. Uh... Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, if, if you all could work with me on this, I would consider withdrawing it. Um, I mean, I can tell you I'll work with you on it, but I do oppose the amendment. Okay. And you're correct. It, uh, it isn't a fee increase or tax increase, but what it allows for is an unlimited increase, um, a potentially unlimited increase. And, and, uh, and because of that, I just simply can't, uh, well, can't support it, but I'd be willing to, to visit with you about it. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about something offline later that's not unlimited and uh, be willing to withdraw this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Thank you. I, I, without, if there's no objection, I'll withdraw the amendment. Without objection. Mr. Westerman. He is a member of the committee. He is. <laughs> uh, designate Mr. Westerman's amendment. An amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 offered by Mr. Web Westerman, number 029. Without objection, the amendment be considered as read. And Mr. Westerman, you have five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Graves and Ranking Member Larson. also want to uh, commend you on the great job you've done and your staff in working together and coming up with a solid bipartisan bill. And thank you for uh, all the um, policies that you've worked with me and my team on to to go into the base text, into the manager's amendment, and also into uh, the, the on block. Uh, this has, I think, been a great process, and we'll end up with a, a good bill. I've got one final amendment that is uh, simply just a technical amendment, and it's for clarification purposes to make sure that Section 204 works as intended. As you know, the FAA has mandated that all aircraft be equipped with automatic dependent surveillance broadcast or ADS-B technology, which provides greater efficiency and safety for aircraft separation. That's a 
That's a good thing. As such, aircraft are now broadcasting unencrypted signals, providing the flight identification, aircraft type, mode S code, or the aircraft address, position, speed, and other detailed flight data. The unintended consequences of ADS-B is open source, real-time flight tracking, which is in some cases can be a security concern, especially for individuals and companies using their aircraft for business purposes. Section 204 is meant to address those concerns. There are a myriad of places in Section 204 that reference ICAO aircraft identification codes. That term can be confusing as it can refer to a number of different aircraft codes. To avoid confusion, my amendment specifically identifies the mode S code as the identifying code. The amendment also harmonizes this section with the standard operating procedure of the FAA by allowing applicants under this section to attest to the safety or security need for a new mode S code. Again, this amendment doesn't change the purpose of Section 204 or make any substantive changes. It's a technical amendment only to ensure that the section functions as intended. I ask my colleagues to support the amendment, and I yield back. Uh, Mr. Larson. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, I have to, unfortunately, I have to oppose Mr. Westman's amendment, which, uh, in my view, would further erode the transparency of our air traffic system. I understand the arguments for protecting the privacy and security of travelers, but this change would see uh, aircraft and avionics manufacturers, as well as the U.S. government, footing the bill for what is actually some fairly major uh, airspace changes to protect privacy. Uh, we've reached a bipartisan agreement on the base text of uh, this provision uh, and uh, would ask colleagues to oppose this amendment. That yield back. Anyone else wish to be heard on the amendment? Uh, seeing none, I think, uh, I think what you got, Bruce, is a, is a good idea, and I'd like to be able to work with you um, moving forward uh, as we go to the floor. But uh, uh, I'm going to have to oppose it, too, as a result of the big four. So um, seeing as you all want to study the technicalities of the amendment more, I would withdrawing the amendment and maybe working out the get the technicalities corrected on the floor would that be acceptable? yep we can absolutely try yep all right then I'll uh, offer to withdraw the amendment thank you uh, Brian mr. mast we'll go to you um, your first amendment is 56. in fact we'll just we'll let you do um, one and then we'll do the second one so uh, designate Mr. Mass 56. An amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 offered by Mr. Mask number 056. Without objection, the amendment be considered as read. Uh, Mr. Mass, you have your recognized for five minutes on your first amendment. Thank you, Chairman. And just FYI, Mask 56 and Mask 59 very closely correlated to one another. So comments for one certainly uh, translate in part to comments for the other. Uh, and just to, to start with the thesis of this, it's an amendment that would require airports, uh, require uh, reports to the FAA when they deny or when they expand uh, services at the airport curb. And, you know, we, most of us in here, we fly usually once or twice a week and sometimes more often than that if we're going uh, to or from Codell's and other places in between. And what do we encounter at the, the curb of the airports? We encounter law enforcement, uh, maybe you encounter people that are get a, a, a family or a friend to drop them off. You encounter uh, taxis, Ubers, Lyfts. Uh, you encounter outside parking facilities that are dropping people off. You encounter hotel transports, rental car transports, cruise ship or tourist destination transports, and, and the list goes on and on. And uh, for entities that may be asking us uh, for support to build uh, infrastructure at the airports or more parking or more curbside or grants or, uh, you know, affect user fees or you name it. I think it'd be important that we have some report to the FAA that, that we can observe to say, why were you denying, why were you expanding these services so that when they're coming to us later in the future, 
we understand that situation. Uh, so that's the nature of MAST uh, number 56, that we get a report on what's being expanded or denied at the curb uh, in terms of, of all of these access to the curbside, uh, which we encounter and, and probably see as largely congested. I, I can't remember the last airport that I went to or where I didn't see it hugely congested. And uh, so in that, I yield back the remainder of my time and ask for your support. Uh, Mr. Larson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate <clears throat> Mr. Mass's amendment. Unfortunately, we'll um, be opposing it. Um, I, I just don't think it's, um, the FAA has enough burdens we're putting on it as well as not achieving uh, the challenges that they have at times, and adding more to that is uh, probably not in the best interest of the overall goal we're trying to get the FAA to do. And that said, I mean, I, I know if I were confronted with this problem in my own district or in the airport I use, I would be sitting down with the airport directly and asking them, the, asking them these questions and have done that in the past on other issues and wouldn't hesitate to do that and would encourage encourage members to, to, to do that as well. But at this point, uh, no, I'll be opposing. Um, would the gentleman yield for a moment? Uh, Mass 56. Would you yield for a moment? Yeah, sure. I yield. And uh, the comment would simply be this. I don't think we control every single thing that the, the personnel at the FAA read, but this would require that the airports report their decision making to the FAA, not that the FAA burden themselves with reading something, but it would be important to have information in the file to draw upon when we need that information instead of scrambling at a later date to try and go back and come up with the, the who, what, when, where, and why of what happened. And I thank you for yielding. Yeah, uh, gentlemen, well, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, it doesn't change the fundamental, um, fundamental opposition uh, to the amendment, and I'd ask members to oppose. With that, I yield back. Does anyone else wish to be heard uh, on the amendment? Seeing no one. The question is on the amendment, uh, Mr. Mass, number... 56. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. It appears the nays have it, and the nays do have it. Now we have Mr. Mass, number 59. Designate, please. Mass number 59. An amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 offered by Mr. Mass, number 059. That objection, uh, the reading will be, or the amendment will be considered as read. Uh, Mr. Mass, five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, and again, as I said, uh, with 56, similar issues. Uh, so I'm not going to rehash everything that I, I just went over, but to say uh, there should be uh, a fairness and equal treatment for everybody that is coming to the curbside of an airport uh, and a realization that they do all have to work together to create an accessible system for the multi-modes of transportation that we all come encounter with uh, when we're flying in or out of a place. And so this would uh, ensure that anyone who accesses the airport curb be treated equally, that, that all commercial operators, all those that I listed off from the uh, rental car companies to the Uber, the Lyft, the taxi, the cruise ship companies, the buses, the, the airports, you name it, um, that they be subject to some kind of standard uh, across that for rates and fees and, and other charges uh, and, and that that be looked at in that way instead of pigeonholing or gouging uh, one company over another. And uh, in that, that is the nature of this amendment. And I look forward to uh, hearing your comments of support. Mr. Larson. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And unfortunately, Mr. Mass will be waiting a bit longer. Uh, for, that, for that, but appreciate it. I, the amendment is overly prescriptive, um, further undermining airports, individual airports' ability to make their own decisions and uh, oppose the amendment, encourage my colleagues to do the same. If you all want to work with me, I'm happy to withdraw this. Anyone else wish to be heard on the amendment? I can withdraw this if we can work on this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I have a couple of concerns, but um, 
just the broad expansion of federal regulatory authority over the airports, but I'd love to visit with you about it. All right, Chairman, I'll withdraw. Thank you, Mr. Mass. Next, we'll move on to Mr. Payne, number 42. Um, designate the amendment. An amendment, the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, offered by Mr. Payne, number 042. Without objection, the amendment be considered as read. Mr. Payne, you have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ranking Member Larson, I want to thank both of you for working together in a bipartisan manner to address the needs of our aviation sector so that the United States can continue to fly high in terms of innovation and diversification of our aviation workforce. In 2011, the Department of Transportation published a rule requiring air carriers and ticket agents to state the full price for air transportation. This common sense change made life easier for the traveling public as they understood whatever price they were quoted, whether on a website or over the telephone or at the ticket counter, that would be the price they were expected to pay to get from point A to point B. For over a decade, consumers have benefited from this policy. Sadly, a provision in this bill could be the beginning of the end for this policy that has been successful. Will the, will the gentleman yield for just a minute? Yes. Um, I think you're reading from the amendment to which you withdrew. You're reading from 41 and you offered 42. I think you withdrew 41. Yeah, we'll give you a second to figure it out. No worries. We're fine. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, forget Oops. all that I just said. <laughs> we'll we'll even erase the clock for you, and we'll start over again. We, we How's that? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you have five minutes. Thank you. Um, this amendment simply requires the FAA administrator to consult. Uh, federal and local law enforcement officials to ensure that any waiver issued by the administration administrator over an uh, area with the temporary flight restriction would not risk the safety and se security of the public within that area. As a member of this committee and House Committee on Homeland Security, I understand the benefits and drawbacks of temporary flight restrictions. These temporary flight restrictions are necessary to protect VIP movements and to protect the public from airborne threats at large gatherings like sporting events. However, they also add to air traffic congestion. What this amendment seeks to do is to strike a balance between these two competing interests. Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to withdraw this amendment if you're willing to work with uh, me to find a solution that balances uh, the safety of the public on the ground while addressing issues of air traffic congestion above. And I yield back. Absolutely uh, be happy to work with you on that. I've had interest in TFRs for a long time and uh, be happy to work with you on that. I think we address it in, uh, or at least part of it in the base bill, but yeah, I'd be happy to, to work with you. Thank you. Mr. Carson, you want to speak on this? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I move to strike the last word. Um, I, I strongly support uh, my friend Mr. Payne's amendment, Mr. Chairman, although I support the bill, I, I am concerned about the provisions in Section 813, which appear to change current law and weaken temporary flight restrictions. Uh, this is especially important in my district in Indianapolis uh, which has benefited from the safety of temporary flight restrictions to protect NFL and NCAA Division I games, plus major motor speedway events like the Indy 500 over the past 20 years. And since the 9-11 attacks, FAA imposed temporary flight restrictions over stadiums and other locations. Subsequently, the FAA began to issue some waivers 
but Congress imposed a statutory restriction to maintain the safety of major events, especially sporting events with high capacity stadiums. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you'd be willing to enter a colloquy for me, with me, uh, can you please explain the intent of the language in Section 813 of this bill, sir? And I yield. If, if you're referring to, so we've got a big problem out there with um, TFRs over sporting events, and uh, when it conflicts with air shows, is that what you're is that what you're talking about? So what's interesting is is an air show's TFR is five miles in radius, whereas a sporting event's TFR is three miles in radius. Um, it's actually even shallower in terms of the, uh, the flight restriction. And what happens is, is what's bizarre is, in, and I use Cleveland as probably the biggest example of that. So you have, they're within three miles of each other. So what happens is, is if the, if the Cleveland baseball team has a, a game and let's say that uh, it's, it's postponed and they postpone the game on the day of the Cleveland Air Show, what happens is, is the, the uh, uh, sporting TFR takes precedent over the Air Show TFR. Now what's fascinating about that is an Air Show TFR is much, much more restrictive. Under an Air Show TFR, um, you can't turn a prop or start a plane inside that five mile uh, radius without asking the air boss to be able to, uh, to do it. Whereas with a, a stadium TFR, um, you know, that's just simply not the case. Um, this has been a problem for a long time. So what would ultimately happen in that situation is the air show would have to cancel because for whatever reason, the stadium TFR um, takes precedent. And it's not as restrictive, which is bizarre. In fact, if you read the sporting TFRs, they allow exceptions for players, drivers, owners, and special invited guests. And that's the main, I'm trying to, to bring some harmony into this, and there's no reason why um, we can't, uh, we can't uh, uh, have some harmony when it comes to this TFR. Now, what's fascinating to me overall in the grand scheme of things when it comes to stadium TFR, it's three miles. You load up the, what's the slowest aircraft out there? Piper Cub. You can load it up with all the explosives you want to, and you penetrate that TFR, and not a damn thing's going to happen to you. You can't stop it, and it can crash right into uh, uh, to that stadium. Not a thing is going to, to happen. So my question is, why exactly do we even have TFRs over stadiums? And the reason for that is, is because of the banner towers. And NASCAR is a big part of that. The NFL is a big part of that. They don't want anyone advertising over the top of their stadium um, unless they get the revenue for it. And so we, we actually have, I think we have some language in there too, um, dealing with the banner towers, but the whole TFR issue has been a frustration of mine for a long time, and that's Absolutely. the reason why we Well, uh, I, 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 I appreciate that, uh, Chairman. I think we share those concerns as prior law enforcement and, and, and current law enforcement part-time. Um, I'm curious about if whether or not our intelligence agencies as well as our federal agencies um, have evaluated the impact of the language on the safety and security of major sporting events. We just had our Indy 500, which is the largest single sporting day event in the, in, in the world. Um, but I'm curious if they've made an evaluation, particularly uh, as it relates to drones around stadiums. So uh, I'll work with you, Chairman. Um, I'd love to work with you yep. on this. Um, hopefully this moves to the floor to make sure language section 18 uh, doesn't have unintended consequences and undermines the safety of large public gatherings. So I look forward to working with you on this, sir, and I hope our colleagues will support this effort. I yield back. Thank you. Mr. I appreciate Chairman. that. Yes, Mr. Payne. Uh, and as, as Mr. Carson stated, I hope we're able to work on this um, as the bill makes its way to the floor, and I will withdraw my amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Next we have... Esposito, number 018, designate. An amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, offered by Mr. Desposito, number 018. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. And Esposito, five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Larson, for allowing me the opportunity to offer this amendment. As you probably know, the FAA recently granted authority to 
JFK Airport to convert a vacant airplane hangar into housing for illegal migrants. My amendment is pretty simple. The FAA should not have the authority to exacerbate the failed border policies of the Biden administration. This unprecedented move not only puts our national security at risk and strains local resources, it also, it also undermines the mission of CBP officers located at JFK Airport. The FAA did not consult with CBP before approving this plan, nor notify them after giving it the green light. This amendment is necessary in order to protect the American public and our aviation industry by preventing the FAA from replicating this misguided plan at other airports throughout this great nation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, appreciate that, and I appreciate the gentleman's amendment, uh, and I am going to oppose it, which would prohibit the FAA administrator from authorizing airport space to house, to house immigrants, which is something the FAA does not do. This bill is a bipartisan effort on both sides. We worked very hard to reach common ground. Uh, this amendment is injecting the politics and immigration policy into our bipartisan effort. Uh, I prefer that we not do that. There are other avenues to do that in Congress, and uh, um, and we are so close, so close to getting this bill done now. Uh, as important issue as immigration is, and in 22 years, I can assure you we tried many times, including coming close three times to pass a comprehensive immigration bill. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult issue in and of itself. Um, I'd rather that we stick with uh, federal aviation and aviation and aerospace on this bill. So I oppose this amendment and urge other committee members to do the same. Yeah, I yield back. Anyone else wish to be heard on the amendment? Seeing no one, I'd be happy to work with you on this. Um, if you want, moving forward, having said that, um, seeing no one, the question is on the amendment. Amendment by Mr. D'Esposito, number. Which one is it? Eighteen. Eighteen. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. It appears the nays have it. The nays do have it. Thank you, um, Mr. Garcia. You have an Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. Designate. An amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, offered by Mr. Garcia of Illinois, number 031. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. Mr. Garcia, you have five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. A safer, more efficient air travel system is possible if we take steps to empower the airport service workforce. That is why I rise in support of my amendment that ensures that all service workers, regardless of race, background, or zip code, are respected, protected, and paid living wages. Air travel isn't working for anyone, not for travelers, and least of all, for majority black, brown, immigrant, and other service workers who help keep our airport safe, clean, and running. The very people who keep our world moving are too often these very same workers who are denied a decent wage and benefits like paid time off or affordable health care, leaving them unable to support their families or pay their bills. Many airport service workers' wages have been near poverty level for the past 20 years, and this status quo must change if we want to truly address the crisis in air travel. Instead of fixing the problems they created, major airlines are cutting corners, jacking up prices, and thwarting workers' power, all while cashing in on billions in federal funds, leaving passengers to deal with constant dysfunction. A stable, well-paid, and experienced workforce is critical to ensuring a safe, secure, and equitable air travel system, which is why we need federal action now to support airport service workers. Better jobs for airport service workers means lower turnover and a more highly uh, trained workforce, which in turn makes airports safer for everyone. Airports will also be better prepared 
to respond to potential future emergencies before they happen. It's a win-win for all. That's why I'm proud that my hometown, Chicago, is in line with the growing number of airports around the country, such as SFO, Newark International, JFK, LaGuardia, and Philadelphia, that have specifically made the connection between reducing turnover and improving security outcomes when lifting up job standards for service workers at those airports. These policies lift the lives of frontline workers like my constituent, Diana Ordaz Quesada, who makes air travel possible for the elderly and people with disabilities at Midway International Airport and ensures that, they transport, that they're transported to their destination safely. She is on her feet for nearly 10 hours a day, walking 30,000 steps while pushing passengers and handling their luggage. Diana is frequently told to stay for mandatory overtime, which is difficult for her mother, for she is the mother of five, and she has to balance work and family needs. Airport service workers like Diana are the unsung heroes of air travel and coming out of the pandemic where workers like Diana had to show up to work in order to keep their jobs, to keep us moving. The least we can do in this process is not leave them behind and address the unsustainable status quo for workers and travelers alike. As broader industry-wide chaos continues throughout our aviation system, it's clear that we have a big challenge ahead of us, but we also have an opportunity for a way forward. But we also have an opportunity to ensure that airport service workers get to be central in fixing our current crisis and including the Good Jobs for Good Airports Act standards as part of the FAA reauthorization should be the start. I'm proud to be in partnership with my friend and colleague, Congresswoman Holmes Norton, on this important effort to center airport service workers in the FAA reauthorization, which will ensure our taxpayer dollars are advancing a safe, secure infrastructure inside and outside airports across our nation. I would ask that the chair and ranking member continue to work with me on this issue as this legislation advances in the House and keep all aviation workers, including airport service workers, at the forefront of this FAA process. And with that, Mr. Chairman, keeping in the spirit that we've conducted ourselves so far, I will withdraw my amendment. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Uh, Mr. Larson. <clears throat> yeah, uh, thank you for recognizing me out of, uh, out of order, uh, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate the gentleman uh, withdrawing the amendment, but I do want to just underscore our own experience in Washington State at Seattle Tacoma International Airport, uh, where there was an effort to raise the minimum wage um, several years back, a lot of opposition from business uh, folks at that time, but uh, it did pass, and uh, it did uh, uh, raise the standard of living for uh, airport workers. Since then, there's been more done, but there still needs to be more done, and there's no doubt about that. So uh, um, I do stand uh, with uh, Representative Garcia and look forward to working uh, with him in the future to ensure good jobs for the workers at our airports. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Um, next, we'll move to uh, Ms. Wilson. And I think you want to You want to unblock 34? And you change your mind. Which one you want to go first? 34? Oh, you want to withdraw? Well, that's even better. We can have more. Thank you for. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, we are at the point where we have votes. Um, so what I'm going to do is recess for uh, five minutes and uh, to allow everybody to get in here. What? Yeah. I would like to share some good news if you give me one minute. Sure. Um, yesterday I, I filed an amendment dealing with operational phone lines at the FAA, and I actually put the phone up there because they were working remotely for the past several months. The good news is, Sam, is you call that number today, you actually get to speak to a person. So if you ever lose your driver's light or your flight, your license, Somebody's going to actually answer the phone. I just want to say that's government working for the American people. I yield back. Can, can, can I just make a note on that, too, for Mr. Nels? Uh, although we lost a congressional soccer game 42, and I'm really sad about that, um, 
one of the referees is, is a FAA employee, um, and I made this point to him last night as well, and I said, all you need to do is just like have the phone turn over to someone who has a cell phone to answer it and have a person. And so I'd like to think I was part of that as well, Mr. Nels. It's a victory. It's a victory. That's all. It's a victory. <laughs> we are going to recess until 1120, and then we are going to uh, vote. So the committee stands in, uh, in recess. So get everybody here um, to vote. <laughs>
bring the committee back to order. I apologize, we took longer than expected, but we're dealing, we've got another committee that's in the middle of markup as well, and we wanna be respectful to those members that are hung up uh, with that. So, the committee previously postponed proceedings on HR 3935. The question is now on the amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to HR 3935 that have been previously postponed. First, Amendment number 45 offered by Ms. Titus in Nevada to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to HR 3935 on which a recorded vote was ordered and which was not agreed to by voice vote. Is a recorded vote still requested? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you'll agree to work with me on this, I'm willing to withdraw the amendment and the recorded vote request. Yes, absolutely. I, I do agree. Well, thank you. Before yeah. I ask unanimous consent, I want to... I want to thank uh, Mitch Meunier, who is my legislative director, for working so hard to get these provisions in this bill, which I think is a good bill. And I want to say, how about those Golden Knights who play in my district? <laughs> so I'll ask unanimous consent to withdraw. With that objection, that is so ordered. Next, I guess yeah, Mr. Garamendi already withdrew. Um, next, on Amendment 37, um, offered by Mr. Nels of Texas to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 in which a recorded vote was ordered, which was not agreed to by voice vote. Is a recorded vote still requested? Yes, sir. Recorded vote is still requested. Um, clerk, please uh, call the roll. Chairman Graves. Aye. Chairman Graves votes aye. Ranking Mar Member Larson. No. Nope. Ranking Member Larson votes no. Mr. Crawford. Aye. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Webster of Florida. Yay. Mr. Webster of Florida votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Massey. Aye. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. No. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Babin. Aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. Yes. Mr. Graves of Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Ms. Titus. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Bost. Aye. Mr. Bost votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. Aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Payne. No. Mr. Payne votes no. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Mr. Desagne. Mr. Desagne votes no. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Carbajal. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Mr. Allred. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Yes. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Nels. Aye. Mr. Nels votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Gooden of Texas. Mr. Gooden of Texas votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Mr. Pappas votes no. Mr. Mann. Mr. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Mr. Moulton votes no. Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens votes aye. Mr. Auchincloss. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Yakum. Aye. Mr. Yakum votes aye. Ms. Strickland. 
Ms. Strickland votes no. Mrs. Chavez de Reamer. Aye. Mrs. Chavez de Reamer votes aye. Mr. Carter of Louisiana. Mr. Carter of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Edwards votes aye. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan votes no. Mr. Kane of New Jersey. Aye. Mr. Kane of New Jersey votes aye. Mrs. Peltola. Mrs. Peltola votes no. Mr. D'Esposito. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Menendez votes no. Mr. Burleson. Aye. Mr. Burleson votes aye. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon votes no. Mr. James. Aye. Mr. James votes aye. Ms. Sykes. Aye. Ms. Sykes votes no. Mr. Van Orden. Aye. Mr. Van Orden votes aye. Ms. Scolton. No. Ms. Scolton votes no. Mr. Williams of New York. Aye. Mr. Williams of New York votes aye. Ms. Fushi. Ms. Fushi votes no. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Collins. Aye. Mr. Collins votes aye. Mr. Ezell. Aye. Mr. Ezell votes aye. Mr. Duarte. Aye. Mr. Duarte votes aye. Mr. Bean of Florida. Mr. Bean of Florida votes aye. Uh, please call the absentees. Mr. Stauber. Mr. D'Esposito. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Molinaro votes no. Have all members been recorded who wish to be recorded? Please announce the vote. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 32 ayes and 31 noes. I voted 32 ayes, 31 noes. The amendment is agreed to. Next, on Amendment 9, offered by Mr. Collins of Georgia to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, in which a recorded vote was ordered, which was agreed to by voice vote. Is a recorded vote still requested? Uh, by me? I want it on voice. <laughs> it was, it was, I'm not the one that requested it. Is there, yeah, you request it. Yes. Please call the roll. Chairman Graves. No. Chairman Graves votes no. Ranking Member Larson. No. Ranking Member Larson votes no. Mr. Crawford. Yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Webster of Florida. Yes. Mr. Webster of Florida votes no. Mr. Webster of Florida votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Massey. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Babin. Mr. Babin votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. Mr. Graves of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Ms. Titus. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Bost. Aye. Mr. Bost votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. Aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes no. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Mr. Desagne. Mr. Desagne votes no. 
Mr. Stauber. Mr. Carbajal. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Mr. Allred. Mr. Allred votes aye. Mr. Van Drew. Yeah. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Nels. Aye. Mr. Nels votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Gooden of Texas. Mr. Gooden of Texas votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Mr. Pappas votes no. Mr. Mann. Mr. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Mr. Moulton votes aye. Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens votes aye. Mr. Auchincloss. Mr. Auchincloss votes aye. Mr. Yakum. Aye. Mr. Yakum votes aye. Ms. Strickland. Ms. Strickland votes no. Mrs. Chavez Reamer. Aye. Mrs. Chavez Reamer votes aye. Mr. Carter of Louisiana. Mr. Carter of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards votes aye. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan votes no. Mr. Kane of New Jersey. Aye. Mr. Kane of New Jersey votes aye. Mrs. Peltola. Mrs. Peltola votes no. Mr. Desposito. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Menendez votes no. Mr. Burleson. Mr. Burleson votes aye. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon votes no. Mr. James. Mr. James votes aye. Ms. Sykes. Ms. Sykes votes aye. Mr. Van Orden. Mr. Van Orden votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Ms. Skolton votes no. Mr. Williams of New York. Mr. Williams of New York votes aye. Mrs. Fushi. Mrs. Fushi votes no. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Molinaro votes aye. Mr. Collins. Aye. Mr. Collins votes aye. Mr. Ezell. Aye. Mr. Ezell votes aye. Mr. Duarte. Aye. Mr. Duarte votes aye. Mr. Bean of Florida. Mr. Bean of Florida votes aye. Please call the absentees. Mr. Stauber. Aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. D'Esposito. Has everyone been recorded that wishes to be recorded? Please announce the vote. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 36 ayes and 28 noes. By a vote of 36 ayes, 28 noes, the amendment is agreed to. Next on Amendment 33, offered by Mr. Gooden of Texas to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, in which a recorded vote was ordered and was not agreed to by voice vote. Is a recorded vote still requested? Mr. Chairman, if you'll commit to working with me, I'm willing to withdraw this amendment and the recorded vote request. Absolutely. Um, Thank you, and I ask unanimous consent to withdraw my request for the recorded vote and Amendment 33. Without objection, that is so ordered. Next on, yep, true. Next on Amendment 202, offered by Mr. Perry of Pennsylvania to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935 in which a recorded vote was ordered, which was not agreed to by voice vote, is a recorded vote still It is, ordered. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Recorded vote is requested. Clerk, please call the roll. Chairman Graves. No. Chairman Graves votes no. Ranking Member Larson. Ranking Member Larson votes no. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Webster of Florida. Mr. Webster of Florida votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Massey. Mr. Massey votes aye. 
Mr. Cohen? No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Perry? Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi? Oh. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Babin? Mr. Babin votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. No. Mr. Graves of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Ms. Titus. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Bost. Mr. Bost votes no. Mr. Huffman. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes no. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Mr. Desagne. Mr. Desagne votes no. Mr. Stauber. No. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Mr. Allred. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Van Drew. No. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Gooden of Texas. Mr. Gooden of Texas votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Mr. Pappas votes no. Mr. Mann. Mr. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Mr. Moulton votes no. Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens votes aye. Mr. Auchincloss. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Yakum. Aye. Mr. Yakum votes aye. Ms. Strickland. No. Ms. Strickland votes no. Mrs. Chavez Dreamer. No. Mrs. Chavez Dreamer votes no. Mr. Carter of Louisiana. Mr. Carter of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards votes aye. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan votes no. Mr. Kane of New Jersey. No. Mr. Kane of New Jersey votes no. Mrs. Peltola. Mrs. Peltola votes no. Mr. Disposito. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Menendez votes no. Mr. Burleson. Mr. Burleson votes aye. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon votes no. Mr. James. Mr. James votes no. Ms. Sykes. Ms. Sykes votes no. Mr. Van Orden. Mr. Van Orden votes no. Ms. Colton. Ms. Colton votes no. Mr. Williams of New York. Mr. Williams of New York votes no. Mrs. Fushi. Mrs. Fushi votes no. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Molinaro votes no. Mr. Collins. Aye. Mr. Collins votes aye. Mr. Ezell. Aye. Mr. Ezell votes aye. Mr. Duarte. Mr. Duarte votes aye. And Mr. Bean of Florida. Mr. Bean of Florida votes aye. You want to call the absentees? Mr. De Esposito. Does anyone wish to be recorded that isn't recorded? Seeing no one, uh, announce the vote. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 22 ayes and 42 noes. I voted 22 ayes, 42 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. Next on Amendment 34, offered by 
Mr. Gooden of Texas, to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, in which a recorded vote was ordered, which was not agreed to by voice vote. Is a recorded vote still requested? Uh, no, it's not, Mr. Chairman. I believe we've actually included this in another amendment. So I would ask for unanimous consent to withdraw my request for the recorded vote and Amendment 34. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. Next, on Amendment 218, revised, offered by Mr. Perry of Pennsylvania to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, in which a recorded vote was ordered, which was not agreed to by voice vote. Is a recorded vote still requested? It is, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The recorded vote is still requested. Clerk, please call the roll. Chairman Graves. No. Chairman Graves votes no. Ranking Member Larson. No. Ranking Member Larson votes no. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Webster of Florida. Mr. Webster of Florida votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Massey. Aye. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Babin. Mr. Babin votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. No. Mr. Graves of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Ms. Titus. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Bost. Mr. Bost votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes no. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Mr. Desagne. Mr. Desagne votes no. Mr. Stauber. Aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Carbajal. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Mr. Allred. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Nels. Yes. Mr. Nels votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Gooden of Texas. Mr. Gooden of Texas votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Mr. Pappas votes no. Mr. Mann. Mr. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Mr. Moulton votes no. Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens votes aye. Mr. Ockenclaus. Mr. Ockenclaus votes no. Mr. Yakum. Aye. Mr. Yakum votes aye. Ms. Strickland. Ms. Strickland votes no. Mrs. Chavez Dreamer. Aye. Mrs. Chavez Dreamer votes aye. Mr. Carter of Louisiana. Mr. Carter of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Edwards. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan votes no. Mr. Kane of New Jersey. Aye. Mr. Kane of New Jersey votes aye. Mrs. Peltola. Mrs. Peltola votes no. Mr. Desposito. Aye. Mr. Desposito votes aye. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Menendez votes no. Mr. Burleson. Mr. Burleson votes aye. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon votes no. Mr. James. Mr. James votes aye. Ms. Sykes. Ms. Sykes votes no. Mr. Van Orden. Yeah. Mr. Van Orden votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Ms. Skolton votes no. Mr. Williams of New York. Mr. Williams of New York votes no. Mrs. Fushi. Mrs. Fushi votes no. 
Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Molinaro votes aye. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins votes aye. Mr. Ezell. Mr. Ezell votes aye. Mr. Duarte. Aye. Mr. Duarte votes aye. Mr. Bean of Florida. Aye. Mr. Bean of Florida votes aye. Call the absentees. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Edwards votes aye. Mr. Williams of New York changes vote from no and votes aye. Is everyone, or is every, everyone recorded that wishes to be recorded? Seeing no one, clerk, please, please announce the vote. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 33 ayes and 32 noes. I voted 33 ayes and 32 noes. The amendment is agreed to. Just to clarify, the requests for a recorded vote on Gooden 33 and Gooden 34 have been withdrawn and the amendments have been withdrawn. Gooden 36 was adopted as part of the end block package earlier in the markup. Is that is that correct, Mr. Gooden? It is, um, but to be honest, I was misinformed and did not intend to withdraw the one that I withdrew. If it was the committee's purview, I'd like to request a, a recorded vote, and if you're against it, then so be it. I'll accept your objection. Which, which one would that, that be? Um, amendment 34, which is the pilot program for veterans. And by pilot, I mean flying pilots, not a temporary program. So, because it's already been withdrawn, it would have to be resubmitted and redebated, and that's unreasonable. So maybe we can well, work on it on final passage. Yeah, we can't. We we can't do that. But what I'm saying is, is is uh, let, let me work with you, you as we move towards the floor. I appreciate it. Thank and, you all. And talk about that. Thanks. I'm sorry for the confusion, nope. but I'd be happy good. to uh, to work. Thank with you. you. Yep. I'm just confirming the last vote. It was 33 ayes, 32 noes, and it was agreed to. Next, on Amendment 16, offered by Mr. Desaigne of California to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935, in which a recorded vote was ordered, which was not agreed to by voice vote. Is a recorded vote still requested? Yes, Mr. Recorded vote is still requested. Um, clerk, please call the roll. Chairman Graves. No. Chairman Graves votes no. Ranking Member Larson. Ranking Member Larson votes no. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford votes no. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Webster of Florida. Mr. Webster of Florida votes no. Mrs. Napolitano. Yes. Mrs. Napolitano votes aye. Okay. Mr. Massey. No. Mr. Massey votes no. Mr. Cohen. Yes. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes no. Mr. Garamendi. Aye. Mr. Garamendi votes aye. Mr. Babin. No. Mr. Babin votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes aye. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. No. Mr. Graves of Louisiana votes no. Mr. Carson. Aye. 
Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Rouser? No. Mr. Rouser votes no. Ms. Titus? Ms. Titus votes aye. Mr. Bost? Mr. Bost votes no. Mr. Huffman? Aye. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. LaMalfa? Sorry, sir. Mr. LaMalfa votes no. Ms. Brownlee? Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Westerman? Mr. Westerman votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida? Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Mr. Mast? Mr. Mast votes no. Mr. Payne? Mr. Payne votes aye. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon? Mrs. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Mr. Desanye? Mr. Desanye votes aye. Mr. Stauber? No. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Carbajal? Mr. Carbajal votes aye. Mr. Burchett? Mr. Burchett votes no. Mr. Stanton? Mr. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota? Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes no. Mr. Allred? Mr. Allred votes aye. Mr. Van Drew? Mr. Van Drew votes no. Ms. Davids of Kansas? Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Nels? Mr. Nels votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois? M Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Gooden of Texas? Mr. Gooden of Texas votes no. Mr. Pappas? Mr. Pappas votes aye. Mr. Mann? Mr. Mann votes no. Mr. Moulton? Mr. Moulton votes aye. Mr. Owens? Mr. Owens votes no. Mr. Ockenkloss? Mr. Ockenkloss votes aye. Mr. Yakum? No. Mr. Yakum votes no. Ms. Strickland? Aye. Ms. Strickland votes aye. Mrs. Chavez de Reamer? No. Mrs. Chavez de Reamer votes no. Mr. Carter of Louisiana? Mr. Carter of Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Edwards? Mr. Edwards votes no. Mr. Ryan? Mr. Ryan votes aye. Mr. Kane of New Jersey? No. Mr. Kane of New Jersey votes no. Mrs. Peltola? Mrs. Peltola votes aye. Mr. D'Esposito? No. Mr. D'Esposito votes no. Mr. Menendez? Mr. Menendez votes aye. Mr. Burleson? Mr. Burleson votes no. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon? Ms. Hoyle of Oregon votes aye. Mr. James. Mr. James votes no. Ms. Sykes. Ms. Sykes votes aye. Mr. Van Orden. Ms. Skolton. Ms. Skolton votes aye. Mr. Williams of New York. Mr. Williams of New York votes no. Mr. Molinaro. Oh, I'm, my apologies. Mrs. Fushi. Mrs. Fushi votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. <laughs> Mr. Molinaro votes no. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins votes no. Mr. Ezell. Mr. Ezell votes no. Mr. Duarte. Mr. Duarte votes no. Mr. Bean of Florida. Mr. Bean of Florida votes no. Mr. Chairman. I believe I misspoke. Um, I meant to vote yes. Ms. Norton previously voted no and changes her vote to vote aye. Mr. Cohen, if I mislistened and I meant to vote no, but I heard Ms. Norton vote some way and it confused me. <laughs> Mr. Cohen previously voted aye and changes his vote to no. Please call the absentees. Mr. Van Orden. Aye. Mr. Van Orden votes aye. Has everyone been recorded who wishes to be recorded? Please announce the vote.
announce a vote. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 28 ayes and 37 noes. I voted 28 ayes, 37 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. I'm going to speak out of order for just a minute. And before we vote, we're done with amendments. And uh, we will move on to, uh, uh, to passage, which, by the way, final passage, a recorded vote um, has been requested. So we'll be doing a recorded vote on the final passage. But I want to speak out of order real quick. And first of all, I want to be the first to say happy birthday to uh, the ranking member, my colleague up here. Um, Tomorrow. Tomorrow's actually his birthday. We're getting older. We both came in together a long time ago. But uh, again, happy birthday. Uh, also, I was informed it's the Army's birthday today. Is that correct, Mr. Crawford? Well. So. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I may be out of order, but it's also Isabel Burchett's birthday today, 16 <laughs> years. And she's, and she's perfect, like her mama. <laughs> so I just want to say uh, thank you for your patience and for working with us. Um, I hate surprises, and we had no surprises last night um, in doing a, a, a two-day markup, and I think we're all uh, much better rested uh, as a result of the way that, uh, uh, the way that things were done. Uh, but I do appreciate everybody working with me. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, before we go to the floor, um, I made a lot of commitments, and I'm going to do everything and I can to try to help folks get to where they need to be on, uh, on policies that, uh, uh, that they are passionate about and are interested in. So with that, the question is now on the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3935. As amended, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. Now the question is on the adoption of and favorably reporting of H.R. 3935 as amended to the House of Representatives. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. A roll call vote again was requested and Clerk, please call the roll. Chairman Graves. Aye. Chairman Graves votes aye. Ranking Member Larson. Aye. Ranking Member Larson votes aye. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Ms. Norton. Aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Webster of Florida. Mr. Webster of Florida votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Aye. Mrs. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Massey. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Perry. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes aye. Mr. Babin. Mr. Babin votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes aye. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. Mr. Graves of Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Ms. Titus. Ms. Titus votes aye. Mr. Bost. Aye. Mr. Bost votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. LaMalfa. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon. Mrs. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Mr. Desanye. Mr. Desanye votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Carbajal. Mr. Carbajal votes aye. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Mr. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Mr. Allred. Mr. Allred votes aye. Mr. Van Drew. 
Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes aye. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Gooden of Texas. Mr. Gooden of Texas votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Mr. Pappas votes aye. Mr. Mann. Mr. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Mr. Moulton votes aye. Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens votes aye. Mr. Ockenclaus. Mr. Ockenclaus votes aye. Mr. Yakum. Aye. Mr. Yakum votes aye. Ms. Strickland. Ms. Strickland votes aye. Mrs. Chavez de Reamer. Aye. Mrs. Chavez de Reamer votes aye. Mr. Carter of Louisiana. Mr. Carter of Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards votes aye. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan votes aye. Mr. Kane of New Jersey. Aye. Mr. Kane of New Jersey votes aye. Mrs. Peltola. Mrs. Peltola votes aye. Mr. Desposito. Aye. Mr. Desposito votes aye. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Menendez votes aye. Mr. Burleson. Mr. Burleson votes aye. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon. Ms. Hoyle of Oregon votes aye. Mr. James. Mr. James votes aye. Ms. Sykes. Ms. Sykes votes aye. Mr. Van Orden. Mr. Van Orden votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Ms. Skolton votes aye. Mr. Williams of New York. Mr. Williams of New York votes aye. Ms. Fushi. Mrs. Fushi votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Molinaro votes aye. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins votes aye. Mr. Ezell. Mr. Ezell votes aye. Mr. Duarte. Mr. Duarte votes aye. And Mr. Bean of Florida. Mr. Bean of Florida votes aye. Please call the absentees. Mr. Massey. Mr. Perry. Have all members voted, wish to be recorded? Seeing none, please announce the vote. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 63 ayes and zero noes. By unanimous vote, 63 ayes, zero noes. The amendment is agreed to and ordered favorably reported to Favorably reported to the bill. The bill is amended, is agreed to, and ordered favorably reported to the House without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Mr. Larson. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to first off thank you for your work on this. Thank you for uh, listening to our concerns. Um, every bill is, every good bill is a product of uh, good faith bipartisan compromise. This is uh, a, uh, an example of that. The things we would have liked more of and less of, but that's compromise. I think it's a good product overall. And I want to thank my staff on this side of the aisle, Brian Bell, Alex Minardi, Adam Weiss, Liz Farrow, uh, our counsel, Stanton Johnson, for uh, helping us on our side to put this all together. Uh, your staff did a great job as well, and I appreciate the, uh, uh, the bipartisan nature of the bill and the, and the bipartisan work of the staff on this, uh, on this bill. And, and thank you very much for your openness as well. Um, given the fact that we're going to be traveling together, I'm glad we were able to get this bill out uh, in a bipartisan way to make the traveling a little easier this weekend. <laughs> so with that, I yield back. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Larson. And we are on step four of a 10-step process, so we still got a long, long way to, uh, to go. But um, with that, I'd ask unanimous consent that each major order reported today will be reported as a single amendment in the nature of a substitute, incorporating any amendments adopted without objection that is so ordered. I'd ask unanimous consent that the staff be authorized to make any necessary technical, clarifying, and conforming changes to each of the measures uh, ordered reported today to reflect the actions of the committee without objection that is so ordered. Pursuant to House Rule 22, Clause 1, I'd ask unanimous consent that the chairman or his designee be authorized to offer such motions as may be necessary in the House to go to conference with the Senate on the legislation adopted today or any similar measure. With that objection, that is so ordered. But I ask unanimous consent that the chairman, after consultation with the ranking member, have authority to strike or revise any provision of the measures ordered reported today that would cause a sequential referral to another committee or that would cause the bill to be subject 
uh, to the Budget Act or Rule 21 cut go point of order. With that objection, that is so ordered and pursuant to House Rule 11, Clause 2 L, I ask unanimous committee that all members uh, of the committee have at least two calendar days in which to file any supplemental minority, additional, or dissenting views on the legislation adopted today. With that objection, that is so ordered and pursuant to Rule 6 of the Rules of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, I note the presence of a quorum for actions taken on all committee business over the last two days. With that, the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure has completed its business and the committee is adjourned.